I will request Mukesh to come on dais. Please come and give your interesting insight of NPA. Thank you. Mr. Mukesh is a chart accountant and cost accountant. Is gold medalist from Andhra University and is having over 24 experience uh, years experience in the field of corporate finance, debt syndicating, equity syndication. Good evening to all of you. It's a really privilege to be here before the so land uh, professionals and uh, industry experts here. The topic given to me by this IG is uh, how to curb the NPA maintenance. Uh, from banking and from entrepreneur point of view. So, because uh, since morning uh, everybody is talking on behalf of the banks, I will be concentrating and I will be restricting myself uh, from entrepreneur point of view, how not to get fall into the NPA trap. So, my topic is how to nail the NPO before it nails you. Instead of uh, discussing on the meaning of NPAs and classifications, uh, let us, uh, we will skip it as of now because the quorum is also less. So, we will go for the third one, causes of NPA. So, the main, we have been uh, talking about NPAs and we have been reading and we have been uh, seeing into the news channels and everything. Every day someone is uh, suiciding or somebody is running away or somebody, for someone, uh, industry is uh, less valuable than the passport basically. We have uh, compiled some of the reasons uh, for the NPS uh, in the country as of now. Reason is one of the main reasons is the excessive and indiscriminate lending by the banks during the growth period of 2004 and 2008. What actually the the reason is during that growth period of 2004 and 2008. The government of India has given contracts worth 17 lakh crores to different infra companies against which banks have given issued bank guarantees and they have given advances towards the project up to the, to the tune of 4.95 crores. What happened is banks have issued loans to the tune of around up to 70%. Our research says if the contract is 1000 crores, up to 700 crores without getting the land acquisition, it has been disbursed. And our again forensic research says out of the 700 crores, 90% cash has been withdrawn. Huge amount of NPS are due to financial frauds, high interest rates prevailing in the economy, ineffective work of tribunals like DRTs, where cases are pending since decades, not years or months, since decades. And willful defaulters, everybody knows it, poor recovery techniques used by the banks, usually nationalized banks I am talking about, not private banks. Out of the present outstanding gross NPA of 9 lakh crores, 5 lakh crores was sponsored during that period. Exclusively, that was the problem of infrastructure. No other, no MSME is involved, nothing. I am telling the MSME. And inflated cost of project, whenever we see a change in government, we find changes, uh, project costs gets escalated. We are all educated and literates here. Can't we understand that? We do understand. Famous economist uh, Pranav Sen argues, uh, he was the first person to tell that nationalized banks, they are very good in doing retail business, medium segment, MSME, working capital loans, term loans, like that. The nationalized banks don't have expertise, especially the technical expertise to monitor infra projects. And in India, what is happening is, ulta ho hai. ICICI housing loan deta hai. IDBI housing loan deta hai. IFCI ana chota chota builder ko loan dega. And nationalized banks and uh, this, uh, all these other banks, they are giving 40,000 crores loan to one particular infra company, 80,000 crores to some other infra company, where they don't have any technical expertise. Despite that, this is happening on in India. And that is the root cause of the NPA problem. Still, banks are struggling. Despite so many CDRs, SDRs, S4 adjustments, uh, despite uh, write-offs, despite IBC, that is the amount we as a taxpayer, we are suffering. Or rather, it has been skimmed off from our pockets. Because government is again supporting these banks, backdoor entry through maybe capital infusion or something like that. It is everything is through budget only. And budget mein inflow pura tax se hi aata hai. Budget mein jo bhi inflow aata hai, pura taxation se aata hai. Koi print nahi ho raha hai. When a contract is given to one main contractor, 
subsequently it uh, gets down to up to seven levels our research says it is getting down up to seven levels of subcontract maybe cement supply different or some other labor supply different steel supply different each one of them based on the work order they are taking loan from the bank so the 5 lakh crores that is even till now since 2008 it is bleeding the country and you see the opportunity lost had that 5 crore been in the system what it would have generated on sbi research says you deposit 100 rupees in the bank over a period of one month it becomes 3300 rupees that is what uh, sbi reports uh, it's a long back research report where you deposit 100 rupees he says oh 100 rupees kahi aur jata hai kahi aur jata hai kahi aur jata hai in one month it becomes 3300 so 5 lakh crores in all these years we have been discussing in our forum how to make 5 trillion dollar economy it would have been made india would have been 5 trillion dollar economy had that wo bhadda apne upar nahi rehta tha to india would have been made a 5 lakh crore economy 5 trillion economy this ever greening of loans suppose somebody is at default or on the borderline of default in the banks they want to cut down the npa percentages what they will do they will give some other loan to the group company or to the same person in a different fashion and they will close this account or we have observed in some of the forensic cases where two banks they colluded iska default ko bol loan de diya uske default ko ye loan de diya dono ka balance sheet this ever greening process it's going on in india one more uh, banks uh, adjusting uh, banks adjusting at the year end is they are dispersing too many of retail loans at the end of the year this is the season for them now february month uh, march month why they are giving fresh loans so that uh, visa vis uh, the percentage of uh, nps come down usually so off balance sheet they are doing this type of they are resorting to this type of tricks of course they are anyway they are lending for to pay off the earlier money okay reduction in exports financial frauds relating to collective investment schemes mlm chit funds etc poor financial literacy is also one of the reason for nps growing on in india inefficiency in management business failures slackness in credit management and monitoring on the part of the banks inappropriate technology maybe at times technology gets outdated and the unit gets sick lack of coordination among lenders if it is a joint lending mechanism banks usually they don't have any proper uh, coordination or some mechanism with them and power shortage price escalations exchange rates accidents and all these are things since liberalization also it had its impact on the because so much of chinese uh, material is getting infused in the country that local industry is uh, dying a slow death because the import of china is to the tune of more than 1 lakh crores and our msme segment here is suffering because of that we are able to afford rather our big big departmental stores they are able to afford importing from china then procuring here because here also there is one flaw is there in the government policy government recently last year they have made changes to the msme act stating that anyone who is default in paying beyond 45 days to msme it has to be reported yes it has to be reported so what all these big uh, traders like demart or uh, let me not mention them all these big people now they have resorted to they are uh, importing from china or taiwan because importing from china they are getting 3 to 6 months credit against lcs and lcs for such a huge organizations they are getting at throw away price so they, these people are importing for them importing is cheaper because cost of funds in india is around 11 10 to 12% so they are getting cheaper goods in outside so msme is dying a slow death in india because of that policy because government on one hand it wants to control the business saying that you should pay within 45 days nobody is everybody for everyone finance is the business game rotation is the business game every businessman wants larger credit period msme cannot afford in india so they are losing to china some loans as usual directed by the government to give mandatory loans nationalized banks are supposed to give so again that is adding to their woes highly leveraged borrowers funding mismatch now we will come to msme segments till now we were uh, targeting the overall economy as such now we will come to msme segment i would like to convey that most of the nps my experiences i have been uh, dealing with more than 1000 clients in msme segment my experiences 
account of MSME, whether it is going to be an NPA or not within the next two years, I can say just by reading at the project report. However professional it may be, just reading at the project report, I can say. Because at the project report, preparing stage itself, people are defaulting. Fit the case into some bank uh, norms, particular bank norm because they know the manager or they know somebody else, uh, they will tweak the project report. If they want six months gestation period and because the manager says, Nai ji, I'm got six months I cannot give, I don't have power, I have to send file upstairs, three months I can give you gestation period. Promoter he happily accepts it. Take us up, Badme Dekenge Johoga, project start curtain. And that is the main foundation for the account to become NPA in the future. People are not taking proper gestation period, proper capex also they are not visualizing. They are thinking machinery is costing this much and uh, I will put it that much. They are not adding other expenses. So that's one of the reason. Delays in execution of project. That is one of the reasons. Inappropriate gestation period. Poor banking knowledge and habits. This is what we have, my personal experience, this is what we have observed that uh, so many MSME units, they don't have either total banking knowledge or they have poor banking uh, habits. Sir, okay, today I got cash, okay, I will deposit tomorrow. Something like that. Or we will see after next week. They don't do turnouts through banks. I think uh, uh, Sir will be in a better position to explain that. The experience, most of the customers, they don't know the uh, government schemes. Despite the fact that everything nowadays is digitalized and everything is available on Google, still people are... Uh, Struggling not to know what are the schemes of the government. Out of the thousand or a thousand plus customers I am having, we are doing their audit and financial work. What we have observed is more than 900 people, they are not availing subsidies. And the balance hundred who have applied, suppose they belong to a particular caste or some social stigma, they are getting some other people, they are not getting subsidies. So that is also a lacuna on the part of the government to have discriminated uh, uh, sections in the society which shouldn't have been happening and inadequate accounting systems it's there and even in the MSME segment people are not raising bills in time today they have supplied goods they may be raising bills maybe after 15 days or one month so from that time he is getting three months or four months if you don't pay in three months, banker is going to sue them. So that is one of the reasons. And uh, proper agreements and documentations, yes, it is missing on the part of the MSME. For supply and uh, for maybe contract manufacturing or all those things, they don't have proper agreements. One small piece of paper or some sort of work order, that's more than, that's beyond, beyond that they are not doing anything. Put statutory compliances, most of the MSMEs they don't comply with. Proper records not maintained, unhealthy and unhygienic working environment in some of the cases where we have observed, especially in pharma sector. Negative cash flows is the biggest reason for MS and NPS in MSME segment. Despite making profit, you ask any MSME promoter, he said, Sir, my margin to achieve Why? It is got stuck up like that only. Either bills not raised or bills not uh, recovered in time. <laughs> Poor financial planning, he may be thinking I will get payment in 45 days or 60 days but it won't come for 4 months. So 2 months trade cycle it is getting stuck. In the process he will go to the Bajwala Bhaya Kepas who will lend him at 5 rupees per annum, 5 rupees per month interest. That's what is happening here. So he is earning paying interest to others. So that is one of the reasons why entrepreneurship is failing. And uh, Lack of proper cash management leads to stress in sector. Next slide please. And the biggest cause of problem what we have observed is promoters are not taking salaries regularly. Suppose I am a proprietor, I should withdraw at least what is required for my survival, for my family's survival. I should withdraw from the business on a regular basis. I should fix up a time. How I am paying salaries to my staff, I should pay salary to myself first. If I am not surviving, how can I make others survive? If I am not surviving, how can I make survival of the business? It's not possible. 
I am under tremendous distress at home level, and how can I do justice to my business at the social front? It's not possible. So, all the promoters they should take regular salaries to meet their family obligations or social obligations. Almost nil or inadequate insurance policies is my experience. Almost nil. They don't have adequate in, uh, insurance policies. Lack of savings habit. I mean, somebody will raise a question, sir. We are already drowned. How can we have saving? Somebody will raise. I know that. So, if if we had savings right from the beginning, we wouldn't have landed into the problem. That's what my answer is. Forced saving, yes. Suppose you have a daughter at home. You have a daughter at home. All her birthday buy one tola of gold when she is born every year. By the time she is 21 years of age, you have 21 tolas of gold. Half of the marriage expenditure is taken care of. You don't have to borrow at the time of marriage, or rather, you don't have to siphon or divert your loan funds for your daughter's or son's marriage or education. So, forced saving is very much the right, and uh, unable to create personal assets. Every promoter, what we have seen, so many of the promoters, they say, "Abhi ghar baad mein kharidenge." Abhi time hai, abhi jawani hai, baad mein dekhenge, something like that. The thing is, we should start creating assets for ourselves, so that five years or three years down the line, you should have an asset where you can go to the bank with that asset. Sir, okay, I have small asset. I have this small asset. Kindly help me. So that one habit is missing in the promoter's mindset, and they are not taking professional services. We have, when the customer came to us and when we have analyzed the balance sheet, uh, what the SIG is doing, we have stupendous, wonderful job of uh, giving free services to the MSME clients uh, by looking at the balance sheet, the SIG is guiding them. But uh, with uh, due apologies, I prefer to say here slightly differently. The people, the balance sheets, they are uh, not at all reflecting the true position. Something, some part-time accountant will come, he will change the name, cartel change, ho jayega, asset change. Tumhare paas kaun sa machine, ea machine hai, what is the price? 22 lakhs, 22 lakhs, lik dega, kar dega, sign marega, de de, filing ho jayega. This is what is happening. And BSIG wants to help them, free of cost. What is helping on the balance sheet, which is not true. So, what problem is that? They may take 15 days, 20 days, 3 months, 6 months. That's what the usual time is. So, opportunity lost for the promoter. And once a customer lost, is lost forever. He will go to some other competitor. Changes in plans by the promoters during project implementation stage itself. At the time of project planning, he will decide to have this type of machinery or this type of layout. Once the work is going on, in between he will say, some friend will say, why are buying this machine somewhere? Advanced machine you can buy, banks won't support. If any capex uh, increase is there, in between, once a project is approved, loan is approved, subsequently some increase is there in the capital expenditure or some change is there, even a change of uh, machinery supplier also, bankers won't accept that. They say you pay from your pocket. In the process, uh, promoter buy, uh, borrows from friends and relatives at very high rate of interest. And what we have found is utilization of working capital limits for capex and subsequently drying up of funds for business operations. Because the project is getting delayed, what a bank will do is bank will debit the working capital account. Okay, in installment will be debited, interest will be debited to that account. When the actual production starts, most of his funds are dried up. So you don't have money to operate the account. Our research says one in six accounts. New brand units, they are put up for sale for want of working capital. Because their working capital loan, either they have uh, appraised lesser amount or it has been dried up for uh, because it has been utilized for uh, payment towards interest and installments. So, they are suffering. New brand units, they are put up for sale. New brand units, even not even commercial production has started. One in six units. In this very area, surrounding 3 kilometers area, I can show you 1 in 6 units. New brand, they are up for sale. For this reason. 
Next slide, please. Now, I would like to have uh, four or five case studies, uh, though I, want, I didn't want to name my uh, clients as such, but uh, we have changed the names for the reasons, just I wanted to convey certain <laughs> practical aspects why a promoter becomes NPA. This uh, slides I have put before uh, three of the bankers, wholeheartedly they have supported this. So just I am putting before your August gathering. Uh, in the first of the account, uh, first uh, this thing, SS account, uh, lack of practical approach. He was doing, excellent, that's a private limited company in MSME, doing excellent business, having turnover of 100 crores plus, exports of good grains and everything. Someone suggested him why you want to buy and why you want to trade, why don't you purchase your own rice meal? Because he was uh, supplying broken rice uh, products to distilleries and finished product to he was exporting to African countries. Someone suggested him, why don't you have your own rice meal? He purchased it and they, they had started the downfall. Today is running here and there, hiding face from the banks. Because for purchasing the rice meal, because of his profile, he got unsecured business loans to the tune of three crores. 50-50 lakhs he borrowed from six, seven different banks. His entire concentration was in the rice mill. His uh, routine business got affected. Inflows got affected. Rice mill production, it came after six months. Entire accounts in the meantime, everything became empty. Suit filed. So that was one experience we have observed. In the second, uh, this thing, he was doing excellent business. His unit was just hardly two kilometers from this place. He was doing excellent business. Every month his turnover was, uh, he was doing a uh, works contract for some defense establishment. Every month his billing was around 30 lakhs. He was um, almost, he was debt free, uh, but he had health issues with his son. His son got admitted for some rare blood disease. Three months he was admitted. Uh, he didn't had, uh, because they were very young, he didn't had any health policy. 28 lakhs gone from the business. By the time he came back doing business, his entire working capital, everything lost, business lost. Today he is searching for job. The third case, fraud by relatives. He went for uh, some foreign trip, Europe trip for 30 days. By the time he returned back, everything gone. His own brother-in-law treated him, everything wrong. Why I am telling all these things is, what are the precautions as an entrepreneur we should take? For this reason, I am just uh, putting before you all these uh, uh, slides. In one of the cases, what we have observed is, uh, they were running units since 1974. They are manufacturing some OEM uh, engine spare parts for two-wheelers and four-wheelers. Uh, since 1974, they were doing in this business, and uh, they, the gentleman was having three sons. One son is expert in uh, finance, one son is expert in operations, one son was expert in marketing. Post his death, all the three sons got divided. They were having totally four units, so all the three sons they got divided, and all the three sons they became MPA in the market. Reason is. Finance person who is expert in finance, he didn't know how to operate and how to do marketing. Marketing person didn't know finance and operations. Operations person didn't know how to market and finance. All the three units failed. That unit for 32 years in a stretch, it was given the best MSME award in the country, included by the President of India. Once uh, the promoter died, his sons got divided. So, everything, everything put up for uh, this thing. At that moment, they came as for settlement. And we advised them, either you take uh, professionals or you be together. Then only you can survive. And happily, they were together in business, not family-wise. And today, again, they have come to a stage where they are now going for public issue. Since last four years, they are maintaining this thing. And uh, now next year we are launching their publication. And in one more uh, this thing I would like to suggest here is uh, all the promoters. Uh, what I suggest is to have adequate insurance policies, life insurance, medical, and assets insurance policies. 
though it may cost you more in the beginning, but it will have a very peaceful living till at last. Apart from uh, insurance policies, all the promoters, they should have proper banking arrangement. They should not have many bank accounts. What we have observed is so many bank accounts, everyone, sir, you will get a loan there, you will get a account there, you will get a loan there, you will get a loan If you open it, you dig it one or two places, you will get water. If you dig it multiple places uh, without any depth, uh, no water, you, you can't expect any water to come. And one more thing, uh, good health, the promoter should maintain good health. Because most of the money is earning is going towards uh, hospitalization only, nowadays. That's what is observed. Apart from that, uh, we should have good documented uh, agreements with whom we are working with. Mostly MSMEs, they are working as ancillary industries, mostly. But uh, without any proper uh, arrangements. That one part is required on the part of the MSMEs. And uh, one more part is proper banking arrangements, proper health maintenance, proper cordial relations with the labor. Because MSME, usually they play a pivotal role in training the labor. It's what the even central government says. Freshers, uh, they, they, because they cannot afford high salaries, they are bringing freshers from the institutes. They are spending money or rather they are losing opportunity by uh, hiring the inexperienced labor or staff. And they are giving them training. And by the time that staff becomes productive and he starts giving him money, he will get some other job and he will jump. And in the process, MSME, the promoter, he ends up on the losing side. So is the case with so many cooperative banks. They train, they will bring fresh blood, they will train. By the time a person is uh, ready to give, they simply jump to ICICI or IDBI or <laughs> Yes Bank or uh, HDFC or something like that. I have seen in HDFC most of the staff from Mesh Bank. Most of the staff. So, MSME, though they are playing pivotal role, government, all the stakeholders, rather, government, bankers, entrepreneurs himself, judiciary, everyone should help them with holistic approach. Just now, sometime that gentleman was saying he wants more than three months' time or something like that, or maybe proprietorship or someone should be exempted. So, I do support that. Uh, though with the due respect to the law of the land, I do support that, that small, very micro, micro people, they should be supported in a decent way because they are not begging, they are not cheating. They are surviving on their own, plus they are giving employment or they are making survive other families also. They are not cheating others. Like, uh, Big, big people running away with uh, passports, uh, 9,000 9, crores, 20,000 crores, they are not doing that. So, some holistic approach. Of course, thanks to uh, Ms. Uh, Finance Minister, last year they have uh, launched one scheme for MSME still, 31st March, we have some dissolution scheme is there, OTS scheme. So, so thanks to her, but uh, still some holistic approach is required. So, with these words, I thank uh, the SIG and I thank the entire organizations and organizers uh, for giving me an opportunity to present before you. Thanks a lot.